Father in heaven, I pray for a special blessing on every person in this room. That you, O oh God, and your love will overflow in our hearts, our souls, our minds. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you are ready to receive God's love today? I want you to greet somebody with a handshake or a big hug. Tell that person, get ready for God's love. <laughs> and how many of you have come for the first time? Can I see a raise of hands? You've come for the first time. Welcome. Welcome. This is your home. This is your family now. After the feast, please go to the lobby. We'll give you a welcome gift. I'd like to greet all those watching by television and video. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I pray that one day you'll be able to drop by here, be part of the feast here in PICC. Thank you so much for being uh, a part. Right now, I, I'm just looking at these people and I'm saying, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to serve you today. God bless you. To all the fathers in the house, to all the cool dads in the house, to all the good-looking fathers in the house, happy Father's Day. Wonderful, wonderful. You know what we did? We're going to do, do something very special for the fathers. I requested, we requested some of the dads here in PICC to come here and render a song to you. Could we all sit down for a while? This is dedicated to all the fathers in the house.
be just like you Cause he wants to be like me Can I request all the fathers here to stand up from wherever you are? I want to pray for you. Just in case your wife is there, your children are there, could they just extend their hands and touch you? And we're going to say a special blessing for you. All of you who are here, just, you know, you're, maybe your father is not here, but I want you to make the fathers here in the house the proxy, okay? Just extend your hands to maybe a father here in front or the father beside you, behind you. We'll just say a prayer. Father God, you are our father. You are the father. And we thank you for all the dads in our lives. Our biological fathers, our spiritual fathers. Thank you, thank you that they mirrored to us, though imperfectly, they mirrored to us your love. And Father, I pray right now that you would bless my dad, our dads, all the dads in the room. Make them more like Jesus. Make them more like Jesus. And Father, I also pray that you would provide for them every blessing that they need so that they become a richer blessing to their families and to their biological and spiritual children. Father God, come guide, lead, protect, provide. Shepherd them. Give them the miracles that they need. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give them a big hug. Let's give them a kiss. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let's all stand up. Let's come and pray our favorite prayer at the feast. Do you want to be blessed, everybody? Let's say it together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's Word, so I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I am God's beloved. I am God's servant. I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my heart. I'm going to read to you two verses from the New Testament in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. It says, you reap what you sow. Everybody say that with me. You reap what you sow. Do you believe in that? That the universe and every single atom and molecule of this universe is pregnant with a force, the force of reciprocity. What is the force of reciprocity? That everything was caused by a power that what you give you actually you receive back what you plant you harvest what you sow you reap in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6 it says together remember this a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. My simple message for you today, God will find a way to reward you. God will find a way to reward you. 
touch somebody in the arm. Just tell that person, encourage that person. God will find a way to reward you. Amen? Amen. Put your hand over your chest. Everybody say, Jesus, thank you for being a God that rewards. I give my life to you and I will serve you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Give the Lord a big hand, everybody. Touch somebody beside you. Tell that person God will speak to you today. One of the things I notice in life is that you grow what you give away. Can everybody say that with me? You know, just to give you a personal experience. You know, people come up to me and they say, you know, they're so blessed by the feast and they learn so much from the feast. But if there's something I want to share with you, and maybe some of you don't understand this or don't know this, but now you will know. The guy who gets more blessed than anyone else at the feast, guess who? Who? <laughs> me! Now, I'm not saying that in a very selfish way. I'm saying it as a fact. I'll give you an example. People tell me, you know, Bo, I, I receive so much wisdom from you every Sunday. Every Sunday I come here and I take home, you know, buckets load of wisdom. And yet, think about it. Who gets the most wisdom? You receive my message once. Yes or no? You sit down here, you receive my message once, you go home. Am I right? How many times do I receive that message? I, I study it. I think about it. I write it down. I rehearse it a number of times. I pray for it. And then I speak it to you. How many times in a Sunday? Four times. Guess what? Who gets more blessed? The best way to understand something, to master a skill, whether it be math or whether it be English, or whether it be brain surgery, is to teach it. Yes or no? The best way to learn is to teach it. You want to know something really, really, really well? Teach it to someone else. What am I saying? I'm saying that yes, I'm giving you wisdom every Sunday, but guess what? I'm receiving that wisdom so many times. And the chances, the probability that I will apply it in my life is so much greater because I know it more. Am I making sense to you? Well, all I'm saying is this, you grow what you give away and God will find a way to reward. I'm here serving every Sunday, but God will find a way to reward me. Today is a big day. Today is, is a day where you will be given the opportunity to change the very trajectory of your life. Today, this moment is a time where you will be given that opportunity to say, this is it, I'm going to change my destiny. Ask me how. I'm going to give you the opportunity to serve, to join in a ministry, to be part, to graduate, no longer as a participant, no longer as a guest, but as a servant. And I'm going to invite you to serve with me at least one Sunday a month. And this will change your life. This you will experience. God will bless you in such an abundant way. I want you to touch somebody in the arm and say, serve. Serve. And then tell somebody beside you because it will change your life. Because it will change your life in such an amazing way. 
It was my father who taught me how to serve. My father was the one who, you know, since I was a small boy, I saw my father going to the parish church. He was lector. He was, you know, altar boy. He was assistant parish priest. He was, he was all sorts of things. You know, that's what we called him because he was always in church. He was not being paid. He was giving his time. He was giving his talent. He was giving his treasure. But, you know, looking at my dad growing up, you know, I, I never told this to myself. I never said, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll serve one day. But just seeing him and his, his example, I told myself, this is it. You know, deep within me, deep in my heart. It was, it was printed all over in my DNA. And here I am. I'm, I'm serving God. Um, I, I owe a lot to my father. I really do. I just think about him. You know, a while ago at Mass, I, I, I just said, thank you. Thank you, Dad. For, for giving me this example. And, and the way he was blessed, I saw it. I saw how, how blessed he was because of the way he served. And, you know, you do not serve because you want to be blessed. You, 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 you want to serve because you know it's the right thing to do, but then God himself will find a way to reward you. Do I hear an amen? When you give, whatever you give away grows exponentially. There are four ways by which I find God blessing us. How many? The first way that, that, that grows when we give away is um, you grow in your helpfulness. Can everybody say that with me? You grow in your helpfulness. Specifically two things. Number one, you grow in your character of helpfulness and you go, grow in your capacity of helpfulness. You grow in your character and in your capacity when you serve in the right way. When, uh, you know, I, I look at my life and I say, why am I successful in this and this and this and this area of my life? And I have to look back at that one moment in my life when I was 13 years old when I decided, you know, I'm going to serve. And the reason why I can speak like this in front of people is because, well, one day I decided to serve. Uh, speak in a small, tiny, it's a bitsy prayer group of 30 people. The reason why I'm one of the highest corporate speakers in the country, I can look back many, many years ago when for, for 20 years I was just speaking left and right for free in different places. Am I making sense to you? The reason why I'm able to strategize, why I'm able to plan an event, why I'm able to organize groups, why I'm able to innovate a product, why I'm able to have tactics, and why I'm able to think on my feet, well, it's because of all the years and years and years of volunteering and serving left and right in different ministries. The reason why I can play the guitar, for example, is, well, one day our prayer group needed a, a guitarist and I volunteered and I said, I'll play the guitar. I had only one problem. Ask me what? I, I didn't know how to play the guitar. So I had to learn right away. I was 13 years old. And, and thanks be to God, during that time, it was, it was such a blessing that the songs we sang were very, very simple. We only used three chords. D and G and A. You know, that's it. Th those, were, those, were the, those, were the, those were the chords. And I remember, does this, does this go on? Am I playing the wrong guitar? You know, it was not a fancy guitar like this. My, my guitar was really, was really very simple. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this is fancy. Uh, I remember this was the song we sang. First time I play the song, uh, Come Holy Spirit, I Need You. Do you know that song? You know, it's really old, old. Um, Come Holy Spirit. I need, wait, 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 you, and come, Holy Spirit, I pray, that, that, that's how we sang in the first time I played the guitar, and then after that, you know, I, we, I started learning other chords, D, G, and A, and so on. So that, that was... That was uh, and then I started composing songs. You want to hear my first song? The very first song I composed. Wow. 
God says. It's God singing to us. I love you. Yes, I love you. Yes, I love you. I love you. Yes, I love you. Yes, I love you. It's actually, I love you, repeat 16 times. That was the first song I ever composed. You know what? I would sing this song to different schools and, you know, I'd give recollections. And, my gosh, the, you know, the students, they were crying <laughs> when I would sing this song. I, you know, later on, I kind of like asked, and I wonder why they were crying. It's like, kawawa naman yung composer. But I don't know, but, but they really were touched by... So, so there, I learned how to play the guitar and because of service. Am I making sense to you? Later on, I would compose more and more songs. And I remember one time, I was, I was in a... I was in a prayer. This happened years later when a friend of mine comes up and, and says to me, you know, Bo, I need your help. I really need your help. Can you compose a, a, a jingle? I said, what jingle? You know, co compose a jingle. You know, he was in advertising and he was going to present a whole advertising package like, you know, the print ad and then he was going to create, he needed a jingle, a commercial jingle. And I said, I, I, what, what's a jingle? You know, yung, yung caronia and, and, and the uh, YC bikini brief, you know, that, that kind of thing. And I, sorry for my dated examples, you know, this happened years ago. So some of you were not even born at that time. So I, I said, you know, I don't compose jingles, I compose worship songs. And so the guy just kneels down in front of me, you know, figuratively, and he says, oh, please help me, boy. I tried all the other composers. They can't do it. You're my only hope. I need to submit it tomorrow. Tomorrow! Oh, my gosh. And he was my friend, and so I, I, I said, okay, I'll do it. So that night, I got my guitar, and I, I started, you know, fiddling with lyrics and songs. So it was, it was for a bus liner. And, and I, I, I started, you know, I actually for, forgot what, what I composed, but some, 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 something like... La luck by and, and whatever. And anyway, I, I, I finished it in an R and then I put it in a little cassette recorder. There were no CDs then. And then I, I, I gave it to him at, at, at that day. And two weeks later, I was in a prayer meeting and then my friend comes up to me and says, Bo, thank you so much. You know, and he gives me an envelope and I says, What's this? Oh, for the payment for the jingle. What? You're going to pay me? And, and he said, yeah, of course, you know. Ah, okay, thank you. I opened the envelope. I got, I looked at the check. My gosh, there were so many zeros in them. I said, this is how they get paid, you know. Where did it come from? It came from volunteering. Tell somebody beside you, God will find a way to reward you. Thank you. Thank you. God will find a way to reward you. The second thing that happens when you serve God is that He blesses you in this way. You grow in your happiness. Everybody say that with me. I want you to try this out uh, tomorrow, Monday and Tuesday. We're going to make a big experiment. Everybody does this, okay? Everybody. Monday, tomorrow, I want you to make a decision that the whole day, every time you meet a person, you frown at them. You just, anyone, anyone, guard, you know, you know, just someone in the street. You, you just look at them and then you, maybe, no, don't frown at them. You, you act like the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> you, anyone, <laughs> you know, you just, you just do that. The whole day, the whole day, I'm going to assure you that at the end of tomorrow night, you know, you, you, you try it out, but on at the evening, you know, you will have, you'll have the lousiest day in the world. And, and you will, why? Because when you give, you receive. Do I hear an amen? By nighttime tomorrow, you will be singing, Lonely, I'm Mr. Lonely. Why? Because, you know, can you see, can you see how dated my songs are? You know, they're, they're ancient history. I, I need to really listen. My son keeps on telling me, you should listen, Dad, to more modern songs. Yeah, okay, okay. But, but there. But on Tuesday, this is what you do. You do the very opposite. On Tuesday, you just smile at everyone. 
You just smile, 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 smile at everyone. Here's my guarantee. By Tuesday night, you will realize you had one of the happiest days of your life. Because here's the secret to happiness. What's the secret to happiness? The secret to happiness is what you give. When you give happiness, you receive that happiness back. Do I hear an amen? amen. When you serve, when you volunteer in a service, and you know you're not being paid, you, you know you're doing it out of the love of your heart. And this is what happens. You receive happiness. When you give happiness, you receive happiness. Do I hear an amen? amen. Number three, you grow in holiness. Say that with me, please. When you serve, when you volunteer in a ministry, that's what happens. Why? You know, holiness, for many people, they're kind of like confused what ho holiness is. They look at a person who's, you know, very quiet, very docile, sheepish, and somebody who sits at the back of the room, somebody who always has his eyes closed like he was praying or sleeping, but, you know, more, more praying. And then his hands are always clasped in front of his chest. And then his head is tilted about 17.5 degrees, you know, to the left. You know, you look at that person and he walks like that always. And, and then he, he, oh, he's so holy. You know, that's, what, that's our picture of holiness. Or somebody who's always in church. Somebody who's always in church. Somebody who was three, wearing three scapulars, who has seven religious pins pinned to his chest. Somebody, somebody who has two rosaries on the right and on the left. You, know? and, and he, you look at that person and then you say, oh, that person is so holy every day going to church. Or somebody who, who spews out Bible verses left and right in every conversation and says, Hi, Louisa, for God so loved the world. John 3.16. Michael, how are you? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Matthew 6.33. You know, we, we kind of say, Oh, that person is holy. Why? Because he knows a lot of Bible. Or, but friends, I, I think very simply, and, and by the way, I realize this, you know, the most successful people in the world, they, they think simply. Really, really. You, you should try it, you know. Uh, I've realized when, when I look at holiness, holiness at, at its essence, say essence, at its very core is only one thing. Everybody say what? It's love. It's love. That is what holiness is. It's love. And, and when you serve in a ministry... And, you know, you, you're an usher, you're a greeter, you're a musician, you're, you're a singer, you're somebody in the intercession ministry. You know, nobody goes to you and says, thank you. No, you know, you're an usher there and you say, hi, good morning. And people will say, good morning. You know, they, they, don't, they, they don't thank you. You know, the ushers and the greeters, how many times, how many times in a Sunday do actually people come up to you and say, Oh, thank you so much for waking so up early. And you know, you're here volunteering. Your legs are tired. I see varicose veins down there. I mean, my gosh, thank you. You know, do, do people do that? No, they pass you by. But you know what? When you know that you're loving someone, here's what happens. Love is like a muscle. And, and when, you, when you volunteer, you're stretching that love. Yes? Yes? And so that's, that's my recommendation to you. Here's number four. Oh, I'm going to share, I'm going to read to you what, what Mother Teresa wrote about. Very beautiful. She said, I don't wash dishes because I want to clean dishes. I wash dishes because I love those who will use them after I wash them. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that wonderful? There are people who preach because they love the craft of preaching. Or they sing because they love the craft of singing. And there's no problem with that. I think you should have a love for your craft, a love for your skill, a love for your talent, a love for the service. But more important, everybody say, more important. More important than that is the love for the people that you're serving. I can love preaching and I can be an artist when I preach, you know, thinking of different ways of being creative and, 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 and expressing my creativity. That's all good and fine. But at the end of the day, I need to preach a message that will bless you. It's not so much be, being the most creative or being the most imaginative. It's being the most loving preacher in the world. That is my goal. Make sense to you? Here's number four. The fourth way by which God blesses you is that you grow in your harvest. Everybody say harvest. I cannot, 
I cannot just begin to describe to you. You know, when you serve God in a ministry, you get to work with different sorts of people, yes? How many of you understand this? They, they, they interviewed and asked CEOs, you know, thousands of CEOs. It was a massive study. And they asked these CEOs, what's the one criteria that you're looking for when you're hiring uh, people uh, in your company? And all these CEOs, the number one answer that came out, ask me what? The ability to work with people. It's, it's more important than your technical skills. It's more important than your IQ. It's your ability to work with people. And one of the greatest blessings you will ever receive when you volunteer, when you work in, in a ministry. You know, when I was a young kid, I was 13 years old, and I kept on volunteering, volunteering, volunteering. What happened? You know, one of the blessings was being able to work with all sorts of people. And today, you know, the reason why I'm successful in my businesses is because I have all of that. Am I making sense? P people don't understand that. P people don't understand that the universe finds a way to reward you. You know, you give, you give, you give, and you're say saying to yourself, you know, uh, you know I I'm the one in the giving end here. But that's what happens. You just get blessed. Fathers, this is your day. And you know what? Your children, you love them. And you, you sacrifice for them. Do I hear an amen? You know, when your kids are teenagers, you bring them to the party, right? And then you wait for them in the car. And you wait and you wait and you wait, right? Your, 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 your teenager tells you, I'll be out at one, one, 1 in the morning. Okay, I'll be here. You know, it's 3 o'clock in the morning and he's not there. And you're still waiting inside your car, you know? And, and finally, he arrives at 3.30 in the morning uh, in the car and, and, and he kisses you as if nothing happened. Like, like you're supposed to wait for me, right? You know? Hi, Dad. Kisses you and just sleeps right there beside you and you're driving. He, he didn't even say, Dad, sorry. You know, I'm sorry I made you wait. Nothing. You just, you had to wait for me. Like, you're my dad, right? You're supposed to sacrifice that, right? And so you're there sleeping in the car and you're driving. And yeah. Yeah. Then you carry him because he's asleep. And... And, you know, he's a teenager now, but, you know, you have to carry him and you, you put him in bed and you, you're sacrificing. But guess what? A day will come. God will find a way to reward you. You don't know how. It doesn't come from, from your kids, but it comes from God Himself. Yes? Yes? <laughs> Let me end with a story. When I was 14 years old, I was, I was part of this little music ministry and we needed drum sets and we needed guitar, guitars. I was telling my son, you know, we, we bought a second-hand drum set worth 2,000 pesos. That's all we could afford. Um, but it was uh, tearing down and so we needed new money. And so we, it was, thanks be to God, it was Christmas. And so we, we, we went into a, a whole caroling project. We were, we were 20 young people. And I think I was one of the youngest at that time. And we, we all wore white, you know, white pants, white, white shirt. And um, we, we practiced. We had these four voices and, you know, wonderful, wonderful songs. Uh, and then we wrote letters to different people. Can we carol in your home? Can we visit your home next week, this time, this night? And that's what we did. And... We started receiving money from people, you know, that envelopes were given to us after we sing. And sometimes we would be, get, we'd be given 500 bucks and we would be given 1,000 bucks. And th at that time, years ago, ancient history, that, that was really a big amount already. And we noticed something. Ask me what? The bigger the house, the bigger the money. We, we noticed that. And so at the very tail end of our whole caroling project, we were singing in this palatial house. Palatial. And, and we were, we, our, our expectations were right there. Like, whoa, this is going to be big. Like, we, we're going to get 5,000 bucks. I mean, the, the, the grounds itself was like Malacanang. It, it was amazing. And so we were there, and, and we were singing, and we, 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 we gave our best. It was going to be our last performance, and, and we gave it our all. And then we were singing to a little girl seated in a chair, and behind her was her father and her mother. And after our great performance, the little girl uh, came up to us, 
And she gave us an envelope. And we said, thank you. Thank you so much. And the little gir girl said, um, I'm sorry my father is not here. Huh? What? Who's that guy over there? We found out he was a gardener. And then we found out that the, the woman beside him was not the mother, it was, it was the, the helper. And so we, we thanked the little girl, we thanked the gardener, we thanked the helper. We, we rushed back to our bulok na, na fiera. And we, we, we were looking at, at, yes, you know. We opened the, the envelope and it was not 5,000, it was 5 pesos. <laughs> Ask me why. Because we allowed the child to reward us, not the father. Because we allowed the child to reward us, not the father. Do you want to receive five pesos or five thousand? You want the bigger reward, right? You want the bigger envelope, right? Don't expect people to reward you. When you start serving, later on, you're, you're going to have this little sign-up sheet that we're going to give to you. And you're going to sign up here. And you're going to look at these different ministries that are available. And you're going to volunteer. Don't expect your reward coming from people. Don't even expect it from me. You know what? Thanks be to God, I cannot pay you. Thanks be to God, you won't get paid. Thanks be to God, there will be people who will not be thanking you. Ask me why. Because God will be the one to reward you. God will find a way to reward you. When you start serving God, don't let the child, don't let human beings reward you. Tell somebody beside you, let God be the one to reward you. Do I hear an amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Can you pick these two things out of your peace bulletins? Just want to share that with you today. I want to serve, it says here in this card. Here in the, this whole page, it says ministry fair, this big one. Let's read it. There are different clusters by which you can volunteer in. One is in the events cluster. There's a program team, there's musical technical, stage production, visual managers, manual arts, acting, you know, you've got media and communications, you've got print, you've, you've got people who write and people who edit and photography and videography and those involved in the social media. If, you, if that's, that's your thing, volunteer for that. There's another cluster, it's called the admin cluster. You know, this is people in the formation ministry, the financial mentoring ministry, You've got the pastoring, the shepherding, counseling, the kids' ministry, the servants, resources development. You can volunteer for that as well. Then the page back is the warmth ministry. Those are the greeters, the ushers, the welcomers, those who take care of the first-time attendees. The medical ministry is there as well. Security is there as well. So um, you, can, you can volunteer in that. You can volunteer in the liturgy cluster. Lay ministers, lectors, commentators, acolytes. You can join the prayer cluster, the intercessory ministry, the pray over, the healing. So there. So step one, choose a ministry. Step two, fill up the registration card, drop it in the basket in front or at the ministry booths at the lobby. So when you fill this card, you see this card? You fill it up and then later on, during our love offering, you will, you will give your, your envelope in the love offering basket but there'll be another basket for this, okay? Or you can go to the lobby, and those of you who want to inquire, there's going to be booths there of the different clusters. You can ask questions. You can also drop it there at the booth, all right? Let God reward you. I'm going to call on, call on stage some people who would like to share their story with you about how they have been immensely blessed by God. Let's give them a big hand. Brothers and sisters, good morning. The gift of service is only fully realized once the servant understands 
that the master of whom he serves served him first. And further on, in doing his father's business, will he realize that with doing that alone, he allows his father to take care of all his businesses in all the aspects of his life. I came from a place of betrayal when the person that meant the world to me, my dad, that I idolized, that was my superhero growing up, an excellent doctor, an anointed preacher for another community that's on TV speaking to millions of people, left us and fell for sin in 2001. Ten years after, after a long wait and thousands of miles that I traveled, I found myself in his front door knocking, begging for him to open up so I can forgive him. But sadly, he did not open the door for me. I came home back to Manila, felt more betrayed, more bitter, and very angry. It, that, it, it was at that point that my master served me by calling me here at the feast. After six months of attending, I took the call to service. First, as a welcomer, then later as a worship leader, and then later on as a CG head and one of the heads of the singles ministry here at the feast. My father ushered me to be of service. Fast forward to March 2014, just this year, I found myself again in the U.S. And now this time, on my father's 65th birthday, right in front of the majestic mountains of the Yosemite National Park, doing my worship leading in the silence of my heart, in my iPhone, praying that nobody else will see. At that point, my master again revealed himself to me and became my worship leader. Eight people around me tapped my shoulder and said, turn it up, let's sing that song, Mighty to Save, and let's worship our Lord together with the lyrics of Mighty to Save. At that point, my father was saved by my master again. And till, till this very day, he said that it was at that moment that he felt so forgiven and so back in the Lord and his embrace after 13 years. Brothers and sisters, humbled by God's scandalous grace right in front of you, my master, my Lord has blessed all the aspects of my life. Community-wise, I have grown. Serving in the singles ministry with huge dreams, we're able to usher to 60% of the population of PICC singles from 18 years old all the way up for single blessedness. We serve them. Financially, have grown 400% in my income. Professionally, have been promoted three times in the last two years. Academically, graduated as magna cum laude in my MBA. Family-wise, all my relationship, relationships with my family not only revived, but leveled up in God. And just recently, even my, my one true love, I got engaged to in March 2014. Yes, brothers and sisters, you can say that the last three years were the greatest years of my life. And if you ask me what and how, that is because I have taken that call to serve my master. 
And I continue to say yes until today. Four years back, if you would have asked me who I was, I would have said, my name is Chris Monroy and I am an associate vice president for one of the leading BPO companies in the Philippines. But today, if you ask me, I would say that my name is Chris and I am a full-time servant for my Lord and Father. Brothers and sisters, may God bless you more through service. Because in service, not only will you realize your dreams, but your Father's dreams for you. He is not your master alone, but He is your Father in heaven, waiting for you to come back to serve Him and serve with Him. Thank you all. Assistorius um, from the production team and I serve here in PICC. What we do, we are those people who assist on the stage. We have those comlink and then it, it's fun and then we pretend like we're jet fighters sometimes. Um, I am more than glad and grateful that I finally mustered the courage a few months back to finally join the ministry I'm into. I decided to join as I surmised that the feast needed any volunteers and then there I was, here I am, I've started serving. And then one day, it came to my realization that it is actually me who needed this opportunity to serve. My life has been has had a lot of drastic changes since the day I started serving. Um, it, to where I am now, it brought me closer to most to the most amazing people that is crazy enough to do unimaginable things for God and His church, spending their time to be used by God and moved by the Holy Spirit for His greater purpose. Serving in a ministry wherein people accept me for who I am and also for who I am not is such a wonderful blessing. There are times that I wouldn't know the exact things to do to execute it properly, perfectly, but then they, there they are. They constantly inspire me, motivate me, and continuously be patient with me until I finally be able to do the things that I thought I could only do in my imaginations. As it turns out, dreams and imaginations turn into reality. And then that's when I recall during last year's Grima conference as Chris Danham is quoted, God calls on you, not on your ability, but on your availability. You know, just be there, open yourself to, to God's surprises. Jump into whatever He is calling you to do and He will bless you in an abundant way that you can't ever imagine. I am a witness. I've been changed and then I discovered my passion, a passion in which I know that I would do this even if I haven't, I'm not being paid or something. And then it's also what I would continuously do even if I have all the richness in the world. And that is, that's, that gives me an immeasurable fulfillment from God, knowing that I know in myself that I'm able to love what I do and do what I love. Thank you. Good morning. 
Welcome to the feast. Madalas ako minsan tanungin, bata ko nagsiserve? At ang buong yabang ako nagsasabi, kasi ako isang ina. Tapos na yung dalawa kong anak, so wala kong ginagawa. But I was wrong. Because of the famous words of Brother Bo. Tell the person beside you that God will speak to you today. Kung kabiruan kita at katabi kita, sasabihin ko sa'yo, Uy, kakausapin ka na ngayon ng Diyos. Dapat makinig ka na. Yes, I am a witness to God's touching lives, changing hearts, everything. When I joined the warm cluster, especially under the Usher's Greeters Ministry, I'm happy and proud that I belong working with them. And now, pag may nagtanong ulit sa akin, ba't ka nagsiserve? Isa lang ang sasabing ko, because of you, the attendees, you are the reason why I love serving. Una, ngitian lang tayo. Then, naging regular na kayo, hanggang naririnig ko na lang mula sa inyo, sasabihin niyo sa akin, Mother dear, minsan, tita needs, ati needs, at saka, sasabihin ko sa inyo na ilan po kayo, saan po kayo, may nakareserve ba sa inyo? And not only that, even the kids, they too are part of my story every Sunday. Nakikita ko sila, buntis pa lang, binubuntis pa lang ng isang ina. After few weeks or months, makikita ko na ngayon, naka-stroller na. Then not only that, kasama ko na siya na nagmo, nagpa-practice sa aisles na pag, magiging isang usher. And lastly, what a beautiful sight to see. Siya mismo nagdadala ng love offering envelope, put it in inside sa basket ng love offering. Since August 2010, Madalas nila akong biruin na ako na nga daw ang tagabukas ng PICC kasama pa ako sa nagsasara. Kasi because I want to belong to the cycle of blessing in serving God. I, Nida Domingo Rivera, hanggang ngayon, habang may buhay at sa huling hininga ko, Maraming maraming salamat, Diyos Ama, sa ngalan ni Jesus, kasama na Espiritu Santo, for calling me to lovingly serve you for and with others. Amen. Thank you. Uh, may I request or join us if you are 16 and above serve and belong to the cycle of blessing in serving our God. Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Edwin Marcelo and this is my wife, Bim Bim. I started uh, attending the feast way back in Camp Aguinaldo. Uh, initially, I was the only one attending, and then later on, my wife and my two kids joined me. A few months after I started uh, serving the Lord, I started serving in the feast, I was one of those camera guys. Now, the feast for me is actually more of a, a combination of work and service. And so when Makati Feast started five years ago. I was also invited to be part of the music ministry because I was also a musician. And so, through these years, I faithfully served and worked for the Lord. And this is what my, actually, my sons see in me. They see me every Sunday. They see me uh, setting up, making sure that the sound system is working, making sure that the videos are working and from time to time they'd see me play but more than just what they see 
I think they see that I was having a grand time every time I served the Lord. I enjoyed every moment of it. And what, what normally they would see eventually became their passion as well. Hi. Um, since Edwin was already serving here in the PICC as technical head and in the music ministry also, I also volunteered as a visual manager. And at home, when I would prepare a PowerPoint presentation or easy worship presentation for the Mass or for the worship, my boys, Kayel and Shani, would help out. And quickly I realized that um, they were better than me regarding this one. So uh, I eventually also uh, volunteered under the liturgical ministry as lector commentator here in PICC and also in the Makati Feast which I was already doing actually in the parish. And as lector and commentator, you'll see us here in the stage, men and women in white gown proclaiming the word of God. Um, my son, my eldest son, Kayel, serves in the youth high as um, logistic head in the warmth ministry together with Pita Nida as usher. In the music ministry playing his... Um, bass and his electric guitar and also as visual manager. My youngest son, Sean, play, uh, also serves in the youth high, also serves as visual manager in the munis music ministry playing drums and as uh, part of the dance ministry during the 4 p.m. session and as also as photographer. Indeed, our Sunday service has become a family affair and the same with other families also serving here in uh, PICC. And our families has gone beyond just the four of us. It also includes um, all the titos and titas and ates and kuyas who share the talents not only with you but with us, especially for Kayel and Shani. Um, uh, we serve because we want to give back to the Lord for all the overwhelming blessings that He has given us. We, we want to thank the Lord for bringing us here to the feast and for allowing us to serve Him as a family. calling each and every one of you here today. If you haven't served, if you haven't given yourself to this gift, I want you to take this moment to hear God's invitation to you. He wants you to serve. He wants you to be a testimony, just like these other people, of how happy and joyful it is to serve. The Bible says that for the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. And as followers and as believers, I believe that it is our duty, it is our desire to want to follow this kind of lifestyle. And if you're accepting this invite, I want you to stand up. We're going to respond to God today in a powerful way. Everybody lift up your hands as a symbol of your surrender, as a symbol of your faith. Say this with me, Father, I accept your invitation. Use me mightily. Use my hands. Use my feet. Use my life to give glory to this world. In Jesus' name we pray.